Thank you, Madam Support, Ms. Dick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> on Saturday, we had more than a thousand people that were downtown for the Girls on the Runs fall event. Um, Commissioner Evans led the, the charge there with all the girl power that she could bring, so we appreciate her being there. Um, the girls always like to see an elected official at the finish line, so she helped us hand out medals. Um, we missed every everyone else who couldn't make it. I know this weekend was, was really busy, um, but it was a fantastic example of what happens when we're able to all come together with, with a very credible organization that's doing good work in our community. Uh, the City of Aldosta handled part of the logistics. We hosted um, the location and had volunteers. Um, some of our staff who's, who's here tonight um, helped with that, but I think that we may have, have started a new tradition with that fall race. It, it went very well, and um, I just am grateful for you all allowing us the, the opportunity to use that facility on the Saturday for that. We will be hosting a Leadership Lounge Wrap-Up Day at the Emergency Operations Center on Thursday. On Friday, staff will be attending a workforce housing workshop, which is the beginning of the One Valdosta Lounge housing study with Georgia Tech. So we will actually start that process on Friday. Um, if you remember, we had a kickoff several months ago. They have continued to gather the information that they needed for the steering committee uh, workshop that we're having this week. So that is all off to the races on November the 19th. Um, Leadership Lounge Youth will be here for their local government day. If you all are interested in being part of that, let me know and I'll let you know the times. Also, we will be hosting South Georgia Leads at the Historic Courthouse, and that's an opportunity for you as well. Then on November the 21st, One Valdosta Lounge will be having a College and Career Academy Steering Committee meeting. We've talked about the College and Career Academy and the benefits that it could have to workforce development. So that project is still in motion under the umbrella of OVL. Also on November the 21st at 4 p.m. at the Historic Courthouse, we will be celebrating Judge Coward and his tremendous career with his retirement ceremony. Um, also, we will be publishing a date to our citizens of December 1st for that to be the final day for everyone to target getting their debris to the curb. Knowing that everyone is not going to have it to the curb by December 1st, that's okay. There are some folks that have so many trees down that they need what's currently there to be cleared so that they can add more to it. So we will still continue to make multiple passes across the county until all of that is picked up, but we needed to put a date on the calendar um, to keep people mindful that there, there will be an end to all of that pickup. So as we heard from Samaritan's Purse, they are still working. Um, we have uh, an agreement with those large volunteer organizations that if we get into January um, and the haulers have really pared down and they're still helping people clear their property and debris needs to be removed, we have a system that works between Ashley's office and Robin's office of Public Works that will get all of those picked up on a case-by-case -case basis. So we're not going to leave anyone out to fend for themselves where that is concerned. Um, we do have um, issues right now with... Um, tree surgeons, mostly out of town tree surgeons that are still here and they're just clearing people's property and adding, some of you may drive across the county and see green debris that's being added to those piles. Certainly that did not come down during Hurricane Helene. Um, those areas are very hard to police. We're getting some calls from citizens that are watching and they are policing and um, they're, they're not happy about green debris put, being put on the curb. I don't, I don't think that any of us look towards look forward to that total being added to in that way but keep in mind until later on in December we'll, we're still being reimbursed at 100%. Um, so the other part of that is there are ordinances that other local governments in our community have that target if you're a tree surgeon or you're in that type of business and you are paid to cut down a tree on someone's property then you must haul that off with you. So right now we don't have an ordinance in place to enforce. Um, if we start catching up with those folks, I know Commissioner Weisenbaker has really received several of those calls. Robin and I have both been to Lake Park following up on some of those over the last couple of weeks. So we will be bringing that draft ordinance to you in the very near future, as, as in before the end of the year near future, um, for your consideration if you all choose to give us that tool from an enforcement standpoint. And if not, we can keep moving forward the way that we are now. But did want to let you know that that's out there. It's something that the tree surgeons have, have actually requested because the ones who are from here know that the expectation is for them to haul that debris off. Um, and there are some of our, our locals that are getting a little irritated with out-of-town folks just cutting and taking the money and leaving on the curb. And 
rightly so. I certainly understand that. So we'll be bringing that ordinance to you all for your consideration. If you have any input um, while we're still in the drafting process of that, if you please let me know, we will make sure that all that gets incorporated. That concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Any questions?